Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on how to remove items in Giants Editor, remove collisions in Giants Editor and duplicate items to create extra gateways and anything like that. Um, so firstly before you edit any mod you should always create a backup for the mod in my opinion so you just need to create a new folder wherever you're working uh, well in fact wherever you just want your backup to be call it the mod name and then just put backup you don't have to call it this but it just makes it a bit easier you can call it whatever you want it just doesn't make it a bit easier and I am editing Carmson for my Let's Play series so I'm just going to call it Carmson Backup that is all I'm going to do and then what you need to do then is go to File Explorer and go to wherever your map is so if you've just downloaded it from a third party site it will be in your downloads folder uh, but otherwise it should be in your mods folder so you just need to go to this PC documents my games I'm 22 mods and then it should be here in your mods folder but because I have a mod folder switcher it's not here because I have several mod folders and I can choose wherever I want them to be on my computer and they're not here straight in my mods folder so I've just got to go to my mods folder here but for you they'll be in your mods folder and then all you need to do is, you need to click on uh, the map, drag it over to copy and paste it into your backup. Don't move it, just copy it. And then you also need to copy it to your, uh, wherever you're working on the mod. You don't have to work on your desktop. I'm just working on my desktop because it makes it just a little bit easier. Uh, and then you will have your backup and you'll have the map as well. And then for this, I'd, uh, I'd recommend that you have 7-zip. You don't have to have 7-zip, but it does just make this a little bit easier to extract it and zip it back up after. So there is a link in the description to download 7-zip. And there is also a link in the description to download Giants Editor, because to do any of this, you are going to need Giants Editor. Um, and to do that, you will have to create an account. Uh, I think it just requires an email and a password, and you'll have an, an account created. And then you'll be able to download the latest version of Giants Editor make sure you have both those installed before you continue and then all you need to do is go to 7-zip extract to whatever your map is called this could take a while if you don't have a very fast computer and then you've got it here this is your extracted version of the map so now you need to delete the zipped version of the map because you don't need that you've got a version of it in the backup folder don't delete that so now you've got the unzipped copy of the map, you just need to open that and for most maps, you just need to go into maps and then map.i3d for some maps it is different uh, but for most maps it is just go to maps and then map.i3d and then you just need to double click on it to open it but if you have never used Giants Editor before you'll need to right click open with Giants Editor I just need to double click on it and it should open it this could take a while open up depending on uh, how detailed the map is really right so I'm in Giants Editor and to move around your camera all you need to do is right click on your mouse and you can move around the camera as much as you want and then to move around uh, all you need to do is you can use the WASD keys whilst you're right clicking you do have to right click whilst doing this or you can scroll using the scroll wheel on your mouse uh, that's sort of for, for precise moving to move quickly to get to wherever you want on the map just hold shift and then use uh, WASD to move around and you'll get there quickly and well this is the hedge that I want to remove between field 2 and 3 for my let's play series because I'm planting canola in both of them I thought why not join them together so you just need to move closer and then when you get close enough just use your scroll wheel to move around because it's a lot more precise and you won't be shooting across the map by accident and then to delete an item it's as simple as just clicking on it and hitting the delete key but I always recommend to never actually delete the item because deleting it can cause issues in your game 
So it's always just best to lower it under the map. Make sure you lower it far enough so it doesn't cause any issues. The hedges won't cause any issues anyway because they don't have collisions. On some maps they do though. Uh, but most maps they don't have collisions so you just need to lower them under the map. And then they've disappeared. So if I go under the map, there you go, you've got the three hedges that I've moved under the map. And then we've got the rest of the hedges and the trees to move as well. It's just as simple as that. The green arrow, when you hover over it, it'll go to yellow, and then you just drag down. It's really easy. And then to remove a tree, it's the exact same. I usually try to go to the uh, main part of the tree in the middle, because it's just a bit easier to get the tree. Wait until the middle arrow goes yellow. Drag it down. That's all you have to do. There we go. That is the final hedge lowered onto the map. So if you go into the map, you can now see them all under the map there. Doesn't need to be neat, just as long as they're under the map enough so that they won't be causing you issues in the game. That is all that matters. And well, the next job is to remove the equations on the telegraph poles because obviously they would have equations in real life. They're made out of wood. Wood has a equation. But because it's a game, it is annoying when they have equations for workers. I won't plow the field in, and I know a lot of people won't, but if you don't want the cushions there, it is helpful to remove them, and I do just like to remove them because it does just make it a lot easier when using workers, and it's one less thing you have to look out for whenever you are uh, plowing or planting, working in your field, whatever you're doing in your field. So what you need to do is click on the telegraph pole, and then go into your scene graph menu, and then just click the little plus icon next to it, and it will come up with cube. You just need to delete that. And I know I said don't delete anything, but the collisions, just delete them. Because otherwise they will cause you issues. You just need to do that for every item that you don't want to have a collision on. And that should get rid of them all. And I only actually have four telegraph poles to do this to today. I might go around and do it to the whole map at some point, just because it makes things a lot easier. Yep, that's that's the collisions removed. You can just remove the them all together, and you can move the wild wires as well individually. But I like to keep them in just because it does look really nice, and it's some extra detail. Just remove the collisions; it makes your life a little bit easier. So now all you need to do is go and plow these two fields together and um, you can remove the gates, move hedges in by duplicating them which is control D. You can do whatever you want uh, but I like to keep the gateways in because they're just extra gateways into the field. Um, but yeah you just need to plow that together and you've got one big field now. Um, so all you need to do is remove hedges, trees and remove the collisions on uh, telegraph poles. And then next, I'm going to actually show you how to add in a gate. Because uh, you might want a new gateway to your field or to your farmyard. And so I'm going to create one over here because I would like a gateway here. Nice quick short way, uh, shortcut to the farm. And a nice another entrance to the field. Uh, accessible entrance as well. So all you need to do is uh, go away the hedgeway over you want your gate under the ground. And then you just need to go over to the gate that you want. I want to go with the double metal gate because I want a nice big farm entrance. You just need to go to it, select a part of it, and then you need to select the whole gate with the gate collision and the trigger to actually open the gate. And don't just move the gate because if you just move it, you'll have no gate. I want to undo that by using Control Z. What you need to do is you need to hit Control D, which will duplicate it. You can see it's gone to the bottom here, and because if I go up and find gate 7 bar double, there's 11 gates, so I'm going to change this to gate bar double 12. You don't have to do this. I like to change the, uh, the number of it. And then all you have to do is drag it over to wherever you want it to be. Make sure you turn it the right way so it opens the right way. And then adjust it. 
So the right height and the right angle. There you go. That's adjusted pretty much perfectly now. And then you just need to move it along to your hedge so that you don't have a gap. And then if you go over here, duplicate the hedge by con using Control D. You don't have a gap in the hedge. And then just move it over. Maybe adjust it a bit. There you go, you've got your new gateway that should work perfectly fine. That is basically how you do that. Very, very simple. Now you've done all your work, you need to make sure you save it, obviously. So you need to go to File and Save, and whilst, you're sa whilst it's saving, it will say Exporting in the bottom corner here. Don't click on the screen, because it will just go to Not Responding, and you will lose all your work. And then once it says Ready, you can close it. It will just close down, and then you need to go to your Map Directory. Base folder of your map. Don't be in Maps to do this. Be in the Base folder, so that it actually works. It should be where your Mod Desk is. And then you just need to select them by dragging and selecting them all, or Control A, and then just right click, go to 7-zip, and add to map your map name, dot .zip. And just wait for that to zip your map up, and your map will be right there as a zip file. And now, all you need to do is put that into your mod folder, which uh, you need to press Control X to cut it, don't copy and paste it because then that will stay here. Use Control X, go to your mods folder, which yours will be here, and paste it. And replace the file in this destination. And that should be it. You will have removed hedges, trees, and removed collisions, and added in a new gate. So let's open up the game, and then we can. See if that has worked. Right, so now you've loaded up your game, you just need to go to career, load up your save game, and then you can test it once it has loaded. Right, there we go, it's loaded up. And um, we're in the game, and I will just speed up time a bit to brighten things up so that you can see things just a little bit easier. And if we just speed up, and go over to this hedge here, which used to be a hedge actually, and it is now a functioning gate. If you uh, follow what I said, you'll have a gate that opens and closes into your field. You might want to go into the landscaping mode and add in some dirt or some gravel to make it look more like a farm entrance, uh, gate entrance. But yeah, you've got a working gate. And if you go all the way over here, your hedge will be gone as well. Your trees are gone as well. You'll still have your little bushes, but you can remove them in the landscaping mode or just plow them under. And your telegraph poles don't have collisions. You can just go straight through them in a vehicle or when you're walking. So, that is how you remove items in Giants Editor, remove collisions in Giants Editor, and add in new gateways in Giants Editor. I hope this has taught you something new. And if you have any questions, comment them down below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, and like the video. Turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post any future videos on Farming Simulator. And take care, and thanks for watching.